Hello, my name is Hirsch and welcome to the Hirsch Shit Show. Well, a little bit about it, and you're gonna laugh, you're gonna cry, you'll probably cuss at me, but that's all right. I just want to bring to you the realization of what's really going on in this world that a lot of people are afraid to speak of. Enjoy. So, we gonna start officially. You ready? I am ready. Right. Uh. Okay, so um, this week on the Her Shit Show, I have Miss Not Your Journey to Take author, Miss Keisha. How are you today? I am wonderful. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here with you. I'm excited. You see, I wore... Let that yes. shit go. <laughs> you need to let that shit go. That is my that is my motto. You understand me? <laughs> let that shit go. Yes, indeed. So tell the people about yourself, Miss Keisha. Yes, yes, yes. My name is Keisha Mason Campbell. I am the author of Not Your Journey to Take. And I teach women that no is a complete sentence. I show them how to set healthy boundaries with their families, all while putting their needs first. Yes, indeed. And I got to meet you. At the six figure storyteller. What was that? Two it was two years ago. Not I didn't get to go to this past when I went to the year before. So yes. And yes, I, was, I still got pictures of us. Oh Lord. <laughs> I did, but we were having a good time. We and I think one of them I posted on Instagram. I think it's me, you, and LB mm -hmm. cutting up. Yes. Yes, yes. indeed. Yeah, two years ago. That was awesome. It was, it was amazing. So tell yes. us again a little bit about your book and where can people get it and what inspired you to write it? Thank you for that. Um, so Not Your Journey to Take talks about um, my journey with having two of my six brothers been incarcerated at the same time for a long time. Mm. And while they were incarcerated, the title of the book was basically their journey wasn't my journey. But I didn't know that at first because I felt like they were my responsibility um, my mom and I, we were constantly tag teaming, making, making sure they were good, making sure they always had money, making sure they didn't need anything, didn't want anything. And because we were not familiar with the penal system, we didn't know how that worked. So as we got in probably a good four or five, six years in, we realized like the tons of money that they, we were sending them, all of the things that we were doing was not a requirement. It was not required. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're busting our butts, making sure that we're good because, you know, we live in every day. And we still still have our everyday bills. Right. But you want to make sure your loved one is good as well. So you're sending them hundreds and hundreds of dollars. You're not sure where they're spending it. You're not sure how they're using it. You're thinking that they need it to live. You have an aha moment and like, wait a minute, you're in prison. You got three meals a day. You got a bed to sleep in. So whether I send you money or not, you're still eating. You still got a place to lay your head. You got free cable, right? Mm -hmm. so we didn't, uh, we, we, but we didn't know. Yeah. Right? We, we didn't know. And my epiphany came when I was invited to go on a trip. And my first thought was, oh, let me make sure the boys are okay. And my friends were like, what do you mean? They're in jail. Well, in prison. They're in prison. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I have to make sure they're okay, you know, before I do this and before I do that. And they were like, they're going to be good. Come on, mm -hmm. let's go. And that was an aha moment for me because I thought I had to do all the things that I was doing because they were my younger brothers. Mm -hmm. And I needed to make sure that they were okay. But they showed me that their journey wasn't my journey. Mm. And that I was taken away from me to make sure that they were okay. But again, that wasn't my journey. And that, that wasn't a task for me to take on. That wasn't something that me or my mom needed to do. But we didn't realize that. Because when your loved one go to prison, your heartstrings are yanked on. Like your heartstrings are they're pulling them, right? The The... Them being in prison is already something that pulls on your heartstrings. But then when you're talking to them on the phone, oh, I need some money. 
Oh, I need some money on the phone. Oh, I need some money on the books. Oh, are y'all coming to see me this week? Are you coming to see me next week? Can you go pick up so-and-so so they can come see me? Can you send so-and-so some money? You're looking like, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> like time, time out, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like what the fuck is going on here? Can and, oh, no, you can say that. You can oh. say that on the Her Shit Show. We cuss here. <laughs> okay. we, we welcome the true emotions with the Her Shit Show. Hold on, let me make sure I'm on do not disturb while we playing. Hold okay. on, because I don't want nothing to disturb our conversation. Give me just one moment. I'm over here. I know my producer is going to be like, what is she doing? <laughs> Listen, everything I ain't supposed to be. Right. But I also have like, oh my God, I knew it was meant for us to talk today. I promise you I knew it was meant for us to talk today. I see your facial expressions as I'm talking. <laughs> baby, I got to Mm, I got I got some stories on that one too, but well, I have told people. Know. I have gotten to a point now, I because you know folks be, I ain't gonna snitch on nobody in prison, but you know folks do what they do in prison. They got ways to do things yeah. and reach out to you and this and that and the third, right? Yep. I got a text message from a couple people, and I say a couple people because I know a lot of people, but okay. they reach out and you know. Oh, can I just hold 20 until, uh, can you send it to this green dot card or can you, first and foremost, you get three hots in a cot and sometimes a snack, partner. There it is. <laughs> I don't have, see, this is, this is, this is, this is Hershey's point of, my perception is reality. You know, that's my hashtag. I feel like I'm out here eating ramen just as much as you are in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like. I got to go buy my clothes. Yours is paid for by tax dollars that I pay taxes into. So I'm helping with that already. You know what I mean? And I also feel like I'm not the one that got myself into that situation. And anybody that knows me knows I don't have the cleanest background. I done been locked up before. I don't ask nobody to bond me out if I do something stupid. I don't ask nobody to come and visit me if I do something stupid because your actions We'll have a reaction and you best believe my thoughts on that is you chose to do it. So my money's my money. Like you said, y'all are out here living day to day and they, they suck a duck job. They They pulled at your heartstrings and that is not fair at how long did it take you to realize like that epiphany, that wake up moment? It was about five years. It was a long time. I promise you it was a long time. One was in prison for eight years and the other one was for 12, I think. So a combination like 20 years together, something like that. And the first like four or five years, I promise you, like anything they needed, anything they wanted, we had, we visited, we showing up. We like, we didn't, we didn't know what to do. We, yeah. we, had never been a part of the penal system and we we didn't know. And they had never been a part of the penal system and never grew up in that in, in a in a environment that required you to go left or right and either way was going to put you in the penal system. Like they didn't grow up in an environment like that. But their choices had repercussions. Right. Mm-hmm. And it it took like four or five years before I had that epiphany because I felt obligated. I felt like I had to, and they didn't help by making me feel like I needed to, you know, yeah. they'll call key. Can you send me key? Can I get key? Can you share key? Drop a little bit here. Key. Let me hold a little bit. Or this, this was a good one. Well, if I was out, I'd be making my own money. Yeah. I got that one before too. Well, bitch, I you said, ain't out. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know what, you know that, you know what that reminds me of? What's that? Like addicts, drug addicts. They do the same thing. Well, if I could, I would, or you know what I mean? Like people, that's that narcissistic trait, not calling them narcissists, but that's that trait that can be fed into. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? And it seems to me like nine times out of 10, they were the young men that we used to talk about coming to our side because I grew up in the struggle zone, you know? Mm-hmm. And 
I look at, and I even teach kids nowadays because my son didn't grow up in that environment the way that I did. And I tell him all the time, don't you go out there chasing no struggle. You ain't got to be a part of it. Right. Right. And it makes you wonder why. Like, why are you chasing something that you don't have to be a part of that's going to change your life in mm -hmm. a way where you're going to have to figure out how to get back what you already had? Mm -hmm. Why? And the recidivism rate is so ridiculously high. There already yep. needs to be reforms in the United States. Why would you want to be a part of a system that is systematically prejudiced off top? One, right. once your name is locked in and if you don't move somewhere where don't nobody know you, where Google is a motherfucker, all we got to do is put your name in and we can find all public records against you. So why yeah. would you put yourself in that situation? Exactly. Exactly. So you wrote that you wrote that lovely book to let other people know, listen, you ain't got to always say yes. And you don't. And and I'm going to tell you about five or six years in, somewhere between four, four and six. So we'll say five to be safe. When I had that, that aha moment, like, I don't owe you. I didn't put you there. Mm -hmm. Had you listened to me, you wouldn't have been there in the first place. Facts. And the game changed. And let me tell you a couple of things that I did. One, when they call and ask for money, you pay for your own money. So I had two of them in there. So say, for example, one would say, um, can you send me $100? Mm -hmm. Well, if Western Union was seven, you get $93. I had another brother. He'd be like, well, send me $110. Because I know if you send me $110, I at least clear $100. And, and, and for them to be, you know, so similar, the way their thought process was, the other one just accepted the $93. The other one was like, nah, send me $110. At least I know I'm going to clear $100 and I might get a couple of dollars over. If Western Union is $7, I'm going to get $103. Hustle man, hustle man. <laughs> All day. All day. He is a negotiator. You understand me? Listen, he was sending your own red shirt back. Do you know what I do? Like, if somebody's arrested or, or locked up for some, especially if it's over some BS. You know what I mean? Like I, I can, if it's your birthday, I'll send you, I'll order one of the little package deals that got candies and snacks in it. Cause you could do that these days where you can go online and order a, a surprise box for somebody. Yeah. Oh, I do that. Like happy birthday. You know, I'll send a little note or something like that. I'm spending $25 for you to get some snacks since you're so hungry. It's your birthday. Well, hold on. Don't forget about Christmas and Thanksgiving. They have, it's not a, it's a, it's a package, Right. So they go through and they check marking all this stuff, like all this stuff. When I tell you easily $500 each coming through with, oh, I need this. I need that. And we don't, we don't know. And yeah. I tell you, you, you can, you, people can say what they want to say. But a lot of I've people been, don't know. A lot of right. people really don't know. And, and you feel an obligated. They're like, oh, I'm going to send you this list. I'm going to need you to order all of this stuff because they only letting us get this package one time. And you're like, oh my gosh, okay, send it to me. I'm gonna get it to you. You get that list. That shit five hundred dollars. He's looking like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You need five hundred dollars for shit. What, what? What is the prison providing to you? What is the <laughs> prison giving you? Uh, three hots and a cot and sometimes a snack. <laughs> there it is. There it is. So you didn't need that. But we we didn't know. And so many people. And that's and that's one of the main reasons why I wrote the book. Because if you had if you didn't grow up in the penal system or didn't go up, grow up knowing anything about the penal system and somebody that you love and care about goes away, you don't know how to navigate. And we didn't know how to navigate. I mean, the prosecutor was horrible. The judges were dicks. Some, the law, one of the lawyers for one of my brothers was an asshole. And he was trying to um, build his political career. So he couldn't give two shits about my brother. He right? wanted him to free out. Right. And then my other brother, who had a great lawyer, right, who was a, a public defender. People sleep on those public defenders. But oh, his public defender one. was awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. H how he ended up doing eight because of his public defender. He was awesome because um, the mandatory minimum is 10 to life mm. for the crime that, you know, they were uh, convicted of. So yeah. they didn't get anywhere from 10 to life. Well, he got 10, but he ended up just doing eight. Okay. So 
that worked out because he it could have been worse, right? Yeah. And as you're talking, he was the only one that public defender that told us what was going on, explained the process to us. About my other brother's lawyer, he was like, you know, I'm not supposed to talk to you about his case because um his and we're like, okay, let's give you some hypotheticals and you can give me some 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 answers, right? And he he would do that. But he really couldn't give us any definite information or definitive information because he wasn't that particular brother's lawyer. And then when we would go to him and ask him different questions and he was like, listen, I just have to be honest with you. Um, he's trying to build his political career. and It's not a lot that I can say or do. Right. You can say a bunch of different things. But if he if he won't answer the phone, secretary is always lying. Like it was it was crazy. I'm going I'm to tell you the last time I talked to the middle brother's lawyer. We have been calling. We have been calling because we knew it was an opportunity for a plea. And um, there were some opportunities on the table, but there was time sensitive, right? I'm calling his lawyer, calling his lawyer. Matter of fact, his name was DeLuca. Um, ah, we don't say names. Oops. I think it's. <laughs> I'm trying to think. And like I might be wrong. The show don't want no defamation cases. <laughs> true, true, true. And I might be wrong because he he was gone for 12 and he's been home like four. So we're looking at like 16, 17 years. So I could be wrong. And the guy's, you know, I'm not, yeah. I can't think of it. He just said he had a shitty lawyer that was going after a political he did. Group, which tends so, to happen a lot. And then when I called him from a different number and it went straight to his call, it went to straight to his phone. So it bypassed the secretary. So he answers the phone like, hey, how you doing? I said, I'm good and you. <laughs> he was like, uh, 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 uh. I said, don't you hang up this phone. I said, because I've been calling you for over a month. And when I tell you, I went in on him. And you know what he basically told me? Oh, he just needed to take a plea. He could care less about what I said. Wow. And so sometimes you get dealt these, these effed up bargains. Yeah. Like you you try, you communicate, you do all the things that you're told to do, that you're required to do. Why are you trying to help your loved one? But you got those people that's in that system. They do what they want to do. They was say what he, they want to say. Was he a public defender pro bono or was he somebody y'all paid? He was paid. Yeah. Oh, no. No, see, I would have wrote a letter to the bar and everything, but people probably would have covered up for him. But you never know. Right. Like right. people that don't, like you said, people don't know. And there are ways to deal with lawyers like that. There are ways, yeah. but it's a long struggle and you have to be willing to fight. And a lot of people aren't, don't have the energy to fight it. You know what I mean? And that's how a lot of cases get overturned too, or retried. But in your brother's case, if he would have been retried after taking that plea deal, it probably wouldn't have gone so well with a different outcome so maybe it would have been best i don't know i wasn't at there you know what i mean but right it, it wouldn't have gone from, well because we found out later like they're all they were all between him the judge the prosecutor they all had a relationship mm. and so because and i didn't know that at but first, until I, right and i didn't know that until um the judge the judge wasn't Yes, it was the judge, the prosecutor, and the lawyer. And I think I got there like early or something. Because I'm one of those people like early is on time. On time is late and late is quiet to me, right? So I'm there early. And, you know, before the... And I didn't know that was the judge. Because, you know, you're walking through and they're having the conversations and they chopping it up and all those things. Mm -hmm. And they were having conversations about cases. Because I was listening because I was paying attention because I didn't know where to go, right? Mm -hmm. We get into the courtroom. I'm like, oh, shoot, that's the prosecutor. Then you know, got to stand in the judge come in. Judge, how old are y'all talking? Mm. You hear the case, and the judge looked like he doing everything but paying attention. Mm. It, we, it was like we just went through the motions for you to give him the mandatory minimum. And that's how we felt. My mother was upset. Mm, excuse me, my mother was upset. She was like, I can't believe it. So we just sat here to watch you go through the motion to do what you were going to do anyway. If you felt mm -hmm. that way, I could have saved me some money. Because now I feel like you just got our money. Because you, we continue, we continue, we continue for you to do what you were already going to do. 
Um, you could have saved a good five thousand dollars. And what what time frame was this? How long ago was it? Uh, uh, early two thousands, mid two thousands. Like you know, the reason why I ask is because now everything is spotlighted. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was early 2000s. Yeah, things weren't spotlighted back then. Families Mm -hmm. didn't go against you. You barely ever. Now, I can tell you my mama, on the other hand, has went up against a couple of judges and lawyers because she's just, you know, I get it from my mama. So (laughs) I know that's right. I love it. (laughs) <laughs> she she don't hold back right is right wrong is wrong and unfortunately we do know that system unlike a lot of other people so knowing the system and knowing right from wrong and reading the laws and I'm extremely nosy and I love to research um I've been in a couple of situations where well just one in particular I can think of where I was in a vehicle that got pulled over and charges came about. And when it came down to actually going to court, they had, they had, you know, how they got the solicitor on this. It was like a Barney Fife area anyway, where it happened. Okay. So you already know what kind of mentality they have, right? And it was two white girls with some black males. So you already know the mentality off top. This was late 90s. Okay. So yep. in Georgia. In Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> so you already know. Yeah. So when, it, when it all boiled down to it and we finally got to go to the court date, um, they threatened to lock me up for a contempt because I politely informed the, the judge that I had more criminal justice knowledge in my pinky toe than the majority of the courtroom. Not in those words, but that's pretty much how I boiled it down. Right. And because the solicitor where you where you do your plea and say guilty or not guilty or whatever. First of all, they made us wait until all the rest of the court cases were done for the day. So it was like late evening, eight o'clock ish by the time they got to us. So y'all been in court all day, all day waiting. And we was, you know, we waited, no worries. You know, everybody waited. She was the only one. The driver was the only one with the lawyer and her lawyer. When I walked in, like you, I was early, walked in, and I caught the lawyer and the police officer speaking. And I politely butted in and said, you know, I would like to see the evidence. Because there was never any evidence, and there was, like, charges after the fact, after the additional charges that they didn't tell us about until we got to jail, which sometimes does that. Got it. Understood. Sometimes does happen. And the police officer said, well, I can go get it. That was the wrong answer for me, because if you walk out of this courtroom, who is to say you don't get somebody else's evidence and put our name on? It? You yep. know, so it it at the end of the day, after I got kicked out of the courtroom, they wouldn't let my mom in the courtroom. They blocked her outside. Um, everything. I got a phone call about an hour, hour and a half later that everything was dropped, dismissed. Except for the driver, which the way it should have been from the beginning. So, yeah, I do. I'm very much aware of how crooked some, some, not all, some right. courtrooms can be, especially in small towns or suburban towns. Right. Where they think they make all the laws and all the rules and they can bypass the real laws because a lot of people don't know their rights. Right. That's one thing Jay-Z will quote, right. In a bunch of his lyrics, know your right. No, you're you right. Know the law, and you know your rights. They can't do all those things to you. Mm-mm. And the crazy part to me is holding them accountable, holding each other accountable. Like there is so many great officers and lawyers and judges. There's so many amazing RIP RBG. You know, there's so many yes. amazing people that do want to uphold the law, and then you do have those bad apples that try to weed through and do their political thing or whatever, and they do a favor for a buddy, and then this and that. It's got to stop. But the difference between now and back then is everything is recorded. Yeah, a lot is recorded, but even in those recordings, half of them aren't even prosecuted. Nope. Nope. They they are prosecuted on the public stage because the public is seeing it. You still Mm -hmm. got a job. You still got a pension. You still doing what you need to do, and you're still being corrupt. 
You get a mm. smack on the hand and go back to work and do it to somebody else. But then as soon as somebody hurt you, shoot you or kill you, then they are wrong. Uh, are they wrong? I'm not wishing anything bad on anybody. I'm just no. saying. Yeah, if you're no. doing it to someone and you reap the seed that you sow, are yeah. they really wrong? Yeah. I, I believe in karma, yeah. but I also believe in doing what I told you, my pockets, my freedom, and my sanity. If I'm going, at, if, if, if there's going to be any type of accountability, one, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to be pissed off and I'm going to cuss about it and I'm going to spit and I'm going to, you know, whatever and <laughs> blow up and get frustrated. But at the same time, you have to, you take your five minutes, you cuss about it, you vent about it, you let it, not let it, not let that shit go yet. Right, you, right. You're going to let that shit go on an anger level. And now you use that negative energy and turn it into a positive outcome. You That's can right. write the proposals for law reforms. You can write, you know, your congressmen because they're also in a political agenda. So, you know, there's so many things that you can do. But if you use your energy in such a negative fashion, you give them exactly what they want. Absolutely. Use freedom. Yep. You're right. I even told um, one of my brothers that were incarcerated, I said, why don't you look at a, a political career? He's like, oh, I can't do that because I've been incarcerated. I said, darling, most of them that's in that field are wrong and criminals on another level. Like you couldn't even compare. I said, but all we need is a stage, a nice little platform. I said, create you an agenda because you have been in the system. So, you know, better. You will probably get more votes than the ones that's, you know, uh, you know, all straight and narrow. I haven't gotten caught yet, but I'm the person. I said, you've been there, done that. You can relate to most of the people. And if not to them in, um, individually, you can relate. They can relate to you from somebody in their family or somebody that they know. Like you will be relatable. You know, that's the one that says, um, send me $110 instead of $100. That's the one I told He's him. <laughs> He's a true negotiator. All hey, day. Mom, it, I look at it this way. If you come out up front with your situation, look at, look at Gary Chambers in Louisiana. And I wish he would have won. I wanted to vote for him and I don't live in Louisiana. But just the way that he came out. Smoking a blunt on one of his I commercials, saw, like I saw that. <laughs> he should have won because he was honest. And you know, well, who's to say that he really didn't win? Because what they do is when they see what the pre polls are doing, that's when that gerrymandering begins to happen right before the vote comes. So that way, you can't win. Just like what is it? Lindsey Graham said that if um, if they didn't have the electoral college, a Republican would never be in the White House again. I don't know if you heard him say that. We need we need to be going off a popular vote in that electoral college because the electoral college is actually picking and choosing when to release those numbers and who they want to win. I agree with right. that. Because if that's we the case, see. Hillary won the first time because she won by millions of votes. But the mm -hmm. electoral college, you put in who you wanted to. That should have been overturned or should have never happened. Well, you already know why that clown was in office, honey. They wanted yeah. one entertainment. And, and, and he gave it to him. And two, he got a lot of dirt on people. Mm -hmm. Any blind person can see that. Yeah. But to me, I'm like, listen, in this age and what's going on in people's lives today, let them tell it. Let them tell it. All y'all do is brush it under the rug anyway. Y'all don't only, and I tell you, like all these like sex charges and all this stuff that people are getting charged with, you only see a certain group actually go to prison actually face is constantly planted on the tv netflix specials created about them but not the ones that they want to brush up under the rug it's up there because somebody done told it so you got to talk about it but you talk about it for like a hot minute and then they go on about their lives or so you magically a disaster happens and it becomes yesterday news there you go look i sound like a conspiracy theorist right now <laughs> No, but it's true. So that's why I'm saying let him tell it. Let, yeah. him, let him tell it. I, I think they should call him on this shit. If you want to yeah. talk about what I've done and you want to tell on me, go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Somebody has done something all the time. It's just that we don't always get caught. Somebody's always doing something, especially in that political realm. 
when we was growing up, we didn't have social media to snitch on us so. uh, at all. Thank God. <laughs> thank God for that. <laughs> And most of the people probably still got picture reels. They ain't got uh done yet. So yeah, <laughs> I still have some. I'm trying to tell you, I found one of them little reels when I moved. I was like, I'm I'm scared to get that yeah. thing printed out. I won't do it either. Mm -mm. No, but you you you're 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 spot on when it comes down to the political side, and I believe a lot of people really don't go out and vote. They should go out and vote. There was yep. literally civil wars within the United States to get your ability to vote, man. What is the problem? They listen to those ones that tell them that their vote doesn't matter. And then they get pissed off when people get into the um, you know, public figure or supposed to be telling you what to do. You get pissed off that they're in those roles, whether it's the House, the Senate, your local representatives, or even the president. But you don't vote. So you can't get pissed off. You can't get angry. What my mom used to say, you better to be pissed off than pissed on. Mm -hmm. I guess it's a matter of choice. But I, I, I agree with that. What you should have done <laughs> is voted. <laughs> okay, Ira Kelly. La Ira. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, so if you get out and vote and stop listening to the masses tell you that it doesn't count. Because it does. They tell and you that because they don't want you to because they want to stay in control. It's also your police officer, your police chiefs, your mm -hmm. fire, department, like your mayors. It's down to the lowest level. And then like we was talking, I was talking to somebody the other day about the um the police departments. Right. You got mm -hmm. your state laws. You got your federal laws. You got your local laws. Right. right. Which the local and the state are pretty much side by side or whatever. Right. But you can add to, but can't take away. We learned that in the military. You learn that in your jobs. You got your guidance. You got your SOPs, your standing operating procedures. You have all these guidelines. But whoever is in charge can also write an MFR. You know what I mean? A memorandum for record for policy. We right. will hold you accountable if X, Y, Z. Like there's ways that it can be better. It's never going to be perfect. We're always right. going to have that. Always. I agree. Never fails. I agree. In every family, we got somebody that's, that's, that's the drug addict, that's the, that's the thief, that's the killer, that's the whatever. No family is perfect. I don't nope. expect for agencies to be perfect because it's different personalities. It's different everything, right? Right. But across the board that have, have my brother and sister's back, you know, no matter what, that shit has to stop. Right. I agree. In order for there to be any change, period. Yes. And I don't think they want to. Like the Lindsey Grahams, they don't want change. They don't want, they don't want to be out of power. They don't know what it will be to be a regular citizen. They need to be voted out. They absolutely need to be voted out. Like just the ones that, that, First of all, I think there should be a limit. Just like it's a limit on the presidency. You Terms. can't be no forever Senate. You can't be a forever person in the House. You cannot keep running. You cannot. You need to be a regular citizen so you can act like everybody else. I said this a long time ago. If you've been in since Jim Crow was law, your ass need to go. Absolutely. If, if you are not willing to adapt and change with the modern times, you're not ever going to please everybody across the board. Right. But you have to find that middle ground. Absolutely. You You're not. Yep. Even the people that 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 you that voted for you and got you into office, you're not going to please all of them either. No. Nope. No, nope, but you can do what's right. Yes. Whatever that may be, you can do what's right. So although you don't please everybody, I can respect you. Yeah. Doing what's right, even if I don't like it, even if I don't agree, even if that's not a topic that I think we should be discussing. And that's mm -hmm. something that you rule upon and you did what was right. Mm -hmm. Whatever that was, you did what was right. Morally, I, I can respect that. Yeah, yes. morally, I can respect that. Yep. I wore my shirt on my first episode that said, fuck racism, and it was pointing a finger in the middle of the shirt, right? I had people 
I love your shirt. And then there's some people, of course, they're going to be quiet because if they do say something, I speak back. You know what I mean? So as you should, it just depends on like me and my cousin Felicia, we say it all the time. If you can change your perception and be willing to listen to another person off of yeah. their, per- their, their perception, you might be able to not mold yours differently, but it's like, it's like your daily affirmations. Just like you do your morning sip and chats, right? Yes. You're giving that word out to, I am great. I am perfect. I am beautiful. I am, you know, handsome. I am, you know, I am me, right? Yes. You do the daily affirmations early as shit in the morning, but I catch them when I wake up, okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> Ain't gonna lie. I don't like getting up early since I retired. <laughs> but that right there, that empowerment, you're going to reach that one person that really needed to hear that that day. They might not admit it to their partner, their family, you know, or nothing like that, but you're going to reach that one person. And that's what the voting does. That's what your, your voice does. That's what you writing the reforms or I met, I met a young lady um, through the internet. Right. I forgot I had posted up under a podcast group and was like, hey, you know, it's the her shit show. We talk to anybody about anything. Just do something out there. And she messaged me back and was like, hey, I got a story for you. And we got to talking. Hers is similar to your story, but it's her personal. She was the one that was locked up. Wow. And I can't wait to talk to her. I promise. Yes. When, When is that scheduled? Um, don't give me the line, the way my mind's set up. I'm just waiting on the contract to come back. That's all. But it'll yes, be. You've got to DM me so I can listen. I got to see that. That's going to be awesome. Well, you know, the shows air every Wednesday. So like we're doing the pre-record right now session. I know my producer is probably like, she needs to stop saying that. Well, it's the truth. We- <laughs> <laughs> I will send him everything you know our recording he's gonna laugh his ass off at us right he's probably not gonna edit much of this out and have me looking crazy because i really don't care and you look beautiful as always my dear i love you thank you thank you i I just like us being in our natural element i love it hey producer we love you (laughs) (laughs) mario gets it he tries not to laugh so hard when me when we're trying to do the the sessions or whatnot because there's you never know what's going to come out of our mouth. Hell, we yeah. don't even know. No, because <laughs> the conversation take us there. Exactly, and I loved it. I love the fact that I caught you on live the other day. Me you too. Was, when 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 you were going to Starbucks and you were just like, let that. And I was like, hey, you can cuss on the her shit show. <laughs> I was like, you. I love it. When can I come? <laughs> That's why I'm like, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. But where is your book at? Where can people buy it? Yes, you can go to my website, which is www.notyourjourneytotake.com. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and TikTok as uh, naturaljourneytotake.com. But also I'm Auntie Key. My uh, at sign is Auntie Key on uh, TikTok because I am the best auntie I believe that I am. I have 13 nieces and nephews. I have six brothers. I'm the eldest and the only girl. Wow, that is rare. I think I'm in like 30. I stopped counting, but that is amazing. And they are, are they out now? And yes. they've already... They're doing their own journey on the outside now. So that is awesome as well. They are the one that was there for eight years. He's been home 12 years now, 12, 12 years now. Yes. And then the other one that did 12 years has been home like five years now. Okay. Um, So they're home doing their thing. Um, You know, we talk and laugh sometimes because, you know, as I had my epiphany and I started becoming more stringent with them. They laughed and like, Oh, you know, you just stopped doing this and you just stopped doing that. And you really cut back on doing this. But you know, I can't complain because I lived like a King while I was in prison. I didn't want for nothing. I didn't need for nothing. Cause although I stopped doing as much as I did, I didn't stop altogether. 
you know, instead of sending you three or four hundred dollars a month, you may have gotten two hundred dollars a month because I yeah. still felt like, you know, you needed to be OK. And I never wanted them to be in a situation and need anything and couldn't have it like that. That wasn't going to happen on my watch. But I had to be mindful about what I did because they had three hots in a cot and sometimes a snack. Yes, <laughs> but now the commissaries do mark up everything like 400 freaking percent. Ooh. That is it is crazy. Like the commissary where you write out your list of what you speaking from experience. Don't judge me. But if, when you it. write it out, it's apparently like the young lady that I spoke to the other day. I don't want to say her name because you're just going to have to watch her show. But she was even explaining to me that it is literally marked up like four hundred. And it's a business. Everything they do is a business. Like, I, I believe that when the prisons became privatized, right, it became big business because now you have these privatized uh, prisons that are also subsidized by the government. But in order to get government money, you got to stay a certain percentage full. In order to stay a certain percentage full, I need these police arresting some people. I need these lawyers. I'd rather pay these lawyers a couple of extra dollars to ruin your future, to ruin your livelihood so that when I get my count, my count is meeting whatever that threshold is so I can get that government money. Although you're making a killing off a canteen, you're making a killing off the phone. You're making a killing off of that raggedy ass food and that uh, vending machine inside the place, right? I mean, come on. Listen, that food is the same shit they feed the military. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Yes, it's girl. Look, you remember the government cheese? Government <laughs> cheese is government cheese. I don't care if you're in the military, if you're in prison, if you're in any type of sanction government anything you're gonna be in the bricks it's gonna be moldy your water gonna be fucked up you gotta clean it and the food gonna be watery as hell and dry and and wow. just nasty yeah See, and, and they actually terrible. have they actually have um like cookbooks that they have to go by really there there what are cookbook is that you remember in school with the lunch lady Girl, yeah. I got my lunch lady arms now, too. You see that? I started, I got the lunch lady arms. But they literally, like, schools, prisons, military, they literally have a health guideline menu. Like, by, they have to plan meals accordingly, and they have to go by that. So the government contract is the same across the board. Even our children that are going to school are eating. The, they were like, oh, people in prison eat better. No, they eating the same shit. <laughs> and it's all nasty. Nasty, processed. My God. Except the pizzas. They need to bring the pizzas back. You remember them yeah. rectangular? Yeah. Them with that, with that, um, that hard bread, the French bread. It was on the French bread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Them pizzas was banging. And that's probably the only, that one. And then they had the circle pizzas too. They had a circle one. But you had to know how to cook it in the microwave. Listen, we, we were going for a long time, going back and forth to the prisons. And you had to, if you could learn how to cook that circle pizza in the microwave, it wasn't real bad. The you know what's grand pizza? What's that? I got some in my, my freezer. <laughs> <laughs> but you can cook that in the oven. You at home. You can cook that yeah. in the oven. And the prison, yeah. we had to put that joker in the microwave and you had to make sure that the center was cooked. And hold on, don't listen. You're going to visit somebody in the prison. You got about a hundred people in there and you got like five microwaves. People looking like, huh, huh, you ain't done with the microwave yet? Huh, huh. Listen, it's a hundred of us, five microwaves and probably only four working. Listen, y'all better grab a ticket off the wall or something and sit your ass down like we at the DMV for this mic. But when I went to go visit my brother in prison, there wasn't no microwave. Honey, there wasn't no microwave. We had to walk in with a clear bag with quarters in it, and the only thing you had was the yep. ragged ass vending machine. That was it. And then you know, you can go up there and take the photos with yeah. with your inmate. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, we like had $10. so much change. We we. When we will go visit the pe the um the COs like at the front will be like, Well, how much change is this? And we like, we don't know. We just accumulate and we just add it, add it into it. We had like the uh, freezer bag, not the little Ziploc bag. We used to have the freezer bag 
full of change. And then one time they went and told us that the bag was too big and we had to go get sandwich bags. Like those CEOs used to be so like so unkind. And I'm like, are you having a bad day? I, I'm going to tell you one time we went to go visit one of my brothers and I'm shapely, right? And I have on a pair of jeans. They weren't tight. They weren't tight. They going to tell me my jeans was too tight. And I'm like, ma'am, they stretch, they spandex. She sent me to the Walmart up the street four times. Each time I had to get some jeans that was bigger and bigger and bigger. The hips and the butt part never really changed. Everything else was so big. It looked like I had on elephant clothes. And I, I was so upset because I'm like, I've, I've been here to visit. You've seen me before. Why are we doing this? They tried to waste their presentation time. Right. But you also got CEOs here. He might have been plucking one of them, and they just got mad at him at that moment because he cut them off, so they were taking it out on the family. There's so many things that you you see CEOs that, what was it, that one CEO to help do the escape or whatever, and she ended up getting killed? (laughs) Yeah. That was crazy. That was crazy. I'm like, that why is- would you risk your livelihood? And she had a whole husband, right? She, yeah, I believe so. I'd have to look the story up again, but I believe so. But you also have inmates getting pregnant by CEOs. Hell, Orange is the New Black wasn't telling no lie in them scripts. Listen, in Oz, do you remember Oz? Yeah, girl, that's an old show, but yeah. Yeah, so that's what I knew prison life to be like. And Oz scared the shit out of me because I didn't know, right? Yeah. At a BC was a beast on the <laughs> show. I don't know his real name, and we won't say that, but the character name was at a BC. He mm-hmm. was a beast and was running things. And I, when my brothers went away, I was so scared. I was like, oh my gosh, I hope ain't no at a BC in that prison because at a BC was something. But when you don't know about the penal system yeah. and you see stuff on the TV, your imagination runs wild. And you want to take care of your loved one and make sure that they're okay. And in order to do that, if I make sure you got money, you're going to be all right. Because you can't leave. Because you got three hots and a cop and maybe a snack. And so, maybe a snack. <laughs> girl, I'm hearing, I'm hearing that they got... Girl, listen, I bullshit you not. Google pen pals for inmates or something like that, right? They actually have pen pal websites for prisoners, women and men. Really? I, listen, <clears throat> so I like to Google people's name and learn their background and stuff like that. And the other day I caught myself going in because I was like, something ain't right about this individual. So I'm tapping away. I found out that the individual does have a background, which I don't give, I don't give two shits about people's back. Hell, I got a background. Like you said, we've all done something, right? Yep. Just some got um, caught and some didn't. Exactly. But then I, I saw the charge and I was like, OK, let me look a little bit further. And then I, I Googled a little bit further. Why well, I found this motherfucker while he was in prison. He was on a pen pal website. What? He still talk to the pen pal? Huh? He, he still talk to the pen pal? I, girl, no, he's out. He's out. Like, I literally just met this individual. You know what I mean? So wow. it wasn't nobody that I'm dating or nothing like that, but they just, you know, the vibe was kind of, kind of off. And then the more that I spoke to the individual about possible job opportunities or expansions, you know, for the business, like, you know, I like to help people out. Right. So right. we got to <laughs> conversing a little bit deeper. And then when I started Googling and researching and this, that, and the third, I'm like, so you was literally on a pen pal prisoner list, like, and a lot of prisoners don't know if enough people get together inside that prison because of the the mold or the living conditions, you can sue that state prison system. Get together, just like so. Say we had um, what is it called? Uh, a class what, action a lawsuit. Of, uh, what class action lawsuit? Yes. Wow. Yes, you can. So I don't know if prisoners are watching this or not, <laughs> but but if, if so, 
if the living conditions are piss poor and is literally getting inmates sick and and they have medical records and it seems to be a trend kind of thing it could be from the water like ferguson how long did it take for ferguson to get on the map and they still don't ferguson have still fucked up. yeah yeah but if you're in a yes you are in prison for a reason got it understood but to me Unless you are like a serial killer, serial rapist, uh, somebody, you know, pretty much on death, you should be at least getting that three hots in a cot for what the tax dollars are actually paying for. Right. Right. There's standards in any organization across the board. And if people are getting sickly and 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 dying or getting ulcers or now all of a sudden got cancers or, you know, things like that. You can put together, and y'all, law enforcement, don't come after me, but you can get together and sue this. I'm not saying that you're going to win, because, of course, you got to have the evidence beyond, uh, you know. A shadow of a doubt. And if you begin to do that, they're going to start covering up and taking things out and, and being in prison unless you, you know, got access to a cell phone. Wink, wink. You got to take some pictures and text them out to somebody. Look, hold on, here it goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, shit, you see fights all the time that on Facebook from prisoners on the inside, you know, video recording riots and stuff like that. So, I mean, you I know. I saw that a TikTok the other day with inmates, and you can see the cells behind them. I'm like, who's recording this TikTok? We ain't gonna snitch on them. We ain't no snitch. Not just right. <laughs> Right, we ain't telling, we ain't telling. <laughs> but I mean, hell, yeah, there's even um prisoners in there with like their own little cook show type things. You know what I mean? So again, I don't knock nobody hustle. Right and at all. As long as you I ain't hurt do, nobody and violate nobody, do your thing. I don't judge nobody for their past, but I am gonna question why and what did you learn from it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hell, I question myself. What did I learn from my things that I've done? Nobody's innocent, a hundred percent. I no. repented. I did my time. You know what I mean? Not prison, yeah. though. I ain't been. Listen, let me make that clear. Her, she ain't been to adult prison. Been in jail a couple <laughs> times, but <laughs> <laughs> and it's a big difference. It is a huge difference. And it I is. think people don't understand between jail, prison, and the federal prison. Like there, there, those are three different levels, three different lo- three different everything. Like when Martha Stewart lady, was a federal prison, right? Being able to she do. She was her living thing. Gucci. You already know she was li- just like the Christies or whatever that just got locked up for the tax. Oh couple. yeah, right there in Georgia. Girl, they live in Gucci. And one one young lady told me it was harder. It was a harder life in county jail than it was in prison. Really? And you know what? I've heard that before. That jail was harder than prison. I heard like jail is harder than prison and prison is harder than federal prison. Mm-hmm. That's what I've heard. I, I, I don't know personally, but I'm like, wow, that's and that's what I mean. by like, it's levels to it. And, and because you may not know, you don't understand. Well, I'm saying you speaking of like those of us that have not been in prison and federal prison, like we don't understand those levels. We know that there are levels to it because you. The, the rules are different. Yeah. What they allow is different. When you go visit, the facility is different. Girl, there's, they got, they got, you know, law libraries for people. Yeah. They got, um, just like based off of that one show where the guy became a lawyer while in prison, you know, um, and he started, that was based on a true story, a gentleman that was in prison and he ended up doing, you know, his law degree and stuff like that. And, trying to help other inmates you know yeah. there are a lot of people that are innocent in prison too so i in all honesty there's enough prisons in this country like we are top ranked when it comes down to incarcerated personnel right yeah separate them by type meaning if you want an all death row prison where the the serial killers go to the serial rapists the you know the I want to cut your body up because it makes me feel good type <laughs> people 
then that's where they need to go so they could just kill each other off while they're in there, you know? Right. And that way the state don't have to pay for all of that. You're right. Exactly. And then, you know, you got your, your middle to low crimes or whatever. There's enough prisons. They're saying overpopulated. That's because you keep trying to put everybody in the same fucking prison. Well, see, they have to do that so they can meet that quota in order to get that government funding. Otherwise, if they spread it out, they won't get that government funding and they're going to really have to work and make sure that the prisons are up to par. And I also think that they should inspect those prisons. If they're getting government money, somebody needs to be going in and inspecting. You inspect all these other small businesses that the government give money to. Inspect these other ones that these other people own who is getting millions of dollars to incarcerate people. But see, they're so busy passing the buck, nobody's coming through and inspecting. Because I've heard some horror stories about or people they're, getting sick. Or their pencil whipping. They're inspecting because per federal contract rules and regulations, they have to be. And yeah. so if you are a government contractor, you have to show where your money is going. You have to show, you know, where your money is coming from. So obviously, you know where the money's coming from. Right. But you got to show where the money's going to. And that includes maintenance. That includes employee paychecks. That includes your logistics side. How many blankets, how many, whatever, with your medical staff, and this and that. Hell, I got one cousin got him, came out with a whole set of chiefs that he didn't go in with. <laughs> Girl, I bullshit you not. Before he went in, his shit was fighting to get to the front. When he came out, they was all furries. What? Better dental than I got. Wow. Yes. Wow. So I guess, again, it does depend on where you're going and those employees that actually give a damn about the individual you know what right because I mean? all of them aren't bad it's just what they said one apple spoil a whole bunch and then you end up thinking everybody is an asshole or everybody is terrible and we know they're not you just pissed off because they just pissed you off you're like fuck all y'all Oops. yeah fuck everybody just, just like people like fuck the police no 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 <laughs> no no we ain't gonna say right. that right it's just a couple few individuals that we're gonna say that about you need to hold people accountable, just like people be like, oh, well, the military, woo, 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 woo. we've had some dumbass soldiers do some very dumbass things with mass killings and AWOLs and going home on leave and marrying their high school sweetheart that might still be 15. You know what I mean? Like, we've had some, some <laughs> dumb shit happen. You know, not every soldier is gung-ho and dress right dress you know right no matter where you go you're gonna have that but if you hold people accountable and keep their feet in that fire yeah a lot of shit can be deviated from that a lot of it i agree i agree i agree and we don't hold those individuals accountable we don't check them where they stand and we let them continue to make a mess before we say or do something but by that time they too old and halfway, what, one foot in the grave or can't be prosecuted because I'm dying or whatever they want to say. And we're like, no, you did the crime. You do the time. Do it. And hold you accountable for your action. Yeah. You, you need to be held accountable. And, and you're right. They don't. They, they let them, you know, pencil push their way out of this way. Pencil push your way out of this way. Or got the gift of gab. So I'm telling on you and I'm telling you what I know about you. All right, Hershey, so you can't do this. You can't do that because I know some things. Why? That shouldn't even be a thing. Business is business is business. Your personal is your personal. Yeah. You got maybe to you might not do me a favor. Separate personal from business at all times. You have to. Yeah, I don't. I tell people don't. every day where I work at, I tell them all the time, I ain't here to like nobody. I'm here to help survivors and do my job and clock the fuck out when I need to clock out. That I'm, part. Extremely, I'm extremely professional at work, but don't try me because I'm also a professional asshole when need be. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. That's right. I mean, when you're at work, you don't have to be my friend. Respect me. I respect you. Get our job done. And when we're done, we're done. Mm-hmm. I don't I come to, to work to have no friends. I used to tell uh, higher rankings or whatever in, in, in the military situations that happen. I'd be like, I respect your rank. I don't give a damn about you as, as a person. 
I don't need to know your business. I don't need to know who your wife, your husband, your children. I don't need to know none of that. All I need to know is your rank and your position. If you can help me in my situation or you can't. That's all I need to know. That's it. I love it. And I do agree. It is not your journey to take. You know what I mean? And I am extremely happy that that you wrote that book. And I am definitely I've been slipping. I need to order it. I do need to order it and put it on my bookshelf. There's a couple of people that I met at the Storyteller Live that I need to go ahead and and spend my money the way that I need to spend my money. (laughs) Well, thank you. Thank you for that. And I I think that Nacho Journey to Take will help so many people um, and not just having incarcerated individuals because incarcerated is also uh, a mind thing, right? That can be a mind fuck because you are incarcerated in what it is that you're dealing with, or you're allowing yourself to be incarcerated with somebody else's situation, right? Um, you know, say some somebody, you know, I got a friend or something and they're going through and they're constantly bringing it to me and now I'm holding on to their problems. I can't function, I can't focus and I can't move because I'm all about your stuff. I ain't thought about me, right? So that's another form of incarceration. We have to let that shit go because it's not our journey. There let that shit go. there it is and we have to because holding on to that is like putting your stuff in prison yes you can't move you in that what is it 8 by 10 11 by 4 girl I don't know if it's a 4 by 6 or 8 by 12 I don't know what it is these days it ain't no telling I think I I, I have no idea but you're right and I I believe in that people get it especially empaths Mm mm-hmm and people that have been through traumas, because we have overcame traumas, we automatically, oh, you got a problem? Let me try to help you get out of that because I don't want you to go through what I went through. Yep. Then I learned, baby, anything that irritates my pockets, my freedom, and my sanity. And it took me a long time to get to that level. I, let me tell when I finally realized I let go, I came back. This was about, well, about 08 time frame. I got a phone call telling me that there was a massive situation going on to where they was literally in a situation where they were about to get jumped by some other people, right? Mm. And my first re- back in the day, it would have been like, Shh, give me the address, I'm pulling up, right? My literal first reaction was like, man, that's fucked up. You might need to leave. <laughs> And I didn't feel like that's the first time I have ever been on that level to where I'd be like, that ain't my business. You know, tell me yeah. about it when you get home. You know what I mean? But don't get beat up too bad. Right. <laughs> I just, I knew at that point that I literally had changed and I stopped focusing. So, I mean, I still get involved to a certain degree, but I tell people I can clap from a distance. I can love from a distance. Yeah. And I can send you information because Google is a motherfucker. So I can send you step by steps and I can give you my perception. But I'm one of them people like, but, you know, it's, it's up to you, though. That's yeah. why I end everything. So you can't say what well, Hershey said. Woo, woo, woo. Nope. Well, congratulations on that, because so many people get stuck there and can't get out. And I am so proud of you that you realize the transition. Mm-hmm. You know, and most people don't. They get there and they get stuck. And then some people like trauma. Some people like drama. Ooh, they they want to live in it and stay in it. That's not me. I'm like you. Okay, well, call me later. Uh huh. Call me later. I right, tell me about it later because I'm not coming. Those days is over. I promise you, I'm not answering the phone when they call back neither. <laughs> I'm I'm mad at that. But I do, you know, we all need somebody to vent to. I am a firm believer. And if I can be that sounding board for you and just put my phone on speakerphone and push it to where I can still hear you and you just get it out. Some people just may need to release that valve. And I'm yeah. all for that because Lord knows I got to release mine sometimes, you know. <laughs> but release but it and let it go. Don't release have- it verbally to me. And you continue to stay in that space, right? Have your moment. Absolutely. Have your moment, have your time, 
Do all those things that you need to do. But when you release it, let it go. And let's move on to something else because there's so much more out there. And that won't be the last problem or the last bullshit that situation that you have. It will not be the last. Because the universe be like, oh, you need another challenge? I got you. <laughs> <laughs> but the universe people, will show up. Have you ever met people that literally it you you've gotten them? or assisted them in some kind of way to get into that peaceful, everything is good and smooth sailing. You did what you needed to do. You know, I'm proud of you, make it happen. But then they get aggravated or depressed to an extent because they don't have that chaos. So they start creating chaos because they miss it. That is exhausting. Yes. That, that is, I had a friend like that. Um, I deal with that friend from a distance because that is exhausting. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And you don't realize how exhausting it is until you release yourself from that person. And you're mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, I, I just can't believe you were just pulling on me like that. Like it is exhausting. Absolutely. And I don't like it. That's what I mean. Have your moment, have your time, cry in it, fight in it, be in it, go off in it, whatever you need to do in it, do it. But when mm -hmm. you're done, let it go. Move on to something else. Let that shit go. Because the universe <laughs> got something else ready for you. Just let Always. it go. And if we, we don't live. go through the journey and don't have the experience, you ain't learning nothing no way. Go through we, it. We literally live every day we die once. So why are you trying to fuck up your health and welcome an early demise from blood pressure, from heart? Like... I, I've had a stroke. I don't want to have another one. Yeah. Oh my God. I, had, I was 20. I was 21 when I had, I don't want another one. Mm. Now, did I, did I stop being an ignorant shit after the stroke? No. I did. <laughs> you I continue did. to cut up. I, I did. I was still like, oh, bitch, you said something. Okay. Just what, you know, that was, you know, it was, and, a lot of people are like, well, so-and-so said, and I, I got told one thing, well, you're so judgmental. No. I can agree with that to an extent. I'm going to judge you based off of your actions because patterns tell a tale. Now, I'm judging that either you have more potential than what you're allowing yourself to have, and I'm disappointed in that, mm -hmm. and or I'm judging because you're fluffing it up as though you're more than what you really are. You know what I mean? Those people I'm are not, exhausting too. I'm not judging in a negative manner. It's always in a positive aspect. But if you ain't shit, I'm going to tell you, you ain't shit. That's what it is. And sometimes you have to. Because some people don't, some people are honest with others as if they're afraid to share with them what the truth is because they're afraid of what the backlash is going to be or what the repercussion is going to be. But I think that they may not like it initially, but they can respect you and your opinion. And then they can check themselves and be like, wow, am I that bad? Am I, you know, that messed up? You know, do I not know any better? Like you can check yourself if somebody lets you know how fucked up you are or yeah. even how great you are. Whatever you need to do, somebody just need to communicate with you. Mm -hmm. And take ownership of what they say. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to take it all. You can pick and choose what you want to accept. But reflect on yourself. Because if you're not that good of a person. Or you, if you are that asshole. Right? Do you want to stay there? I had to check myself. Because I was mean as hell. I'm not even going to lie. I, I was. I had to step back and check myself. Like, well, maybe I might need to, you know, change my tact up a little bit. Because I'm naturally, when I speak, I'm naturally aggressive. You know what I mean? Okay. And it's not. And if I try to think about what I'm saying before I say it, it's going to kind of come out worse than me just saying whatever I was thinking. Right? Or just being as surprised as you are on the spot. Because right. sometimes I don't think. But I had to check myself on that. Because I even had soldiers or other people be like, man, you... Man, you just, you shouldn't have said it like that. Oh, my bad. Sorry. 
But I mean what I said. I didn't mean the way I said it, but I meant what I said, you know. But right. we do we do individually have to check ourselves. And yeah. if you don't have people around you that are willing to say, hey man, I love you, I respect you, but what you're doing right now, that's like people that cheat, right? And the, and the, and the, and the circle knows that this motherfucker's cheating. <laughs> but ain't nobody saying like, hey, bro, man, listen, what, what is you doing? You got a good girl at home or a good dude that has females cheat to you. You got a good dude at home, you got whatever. Or like I saw on Instagram the other day, dude checked his homeboy that was, oh, I'm going to go kill this dude over, over my chick, his baby mama or something. And I think it was a skit, but it was like some real shit. Yeah. How many times have we heard females and males, I'm going to go beat that bitch ass for sleeping with my baby daddy or my dude? Baby, right. hey, are y'all married? One. Two, even if y'all was married, is it worth your pockets, your freedom, or your sanity? Why are you going to fight over something that obviously don't want to be with you? Right, because we cannot control other people. That's something you can't do, not even to your kids. You can't control them. You can give them the best advice. You can talk and you can hope that you guys are on the same page, be it whoever is in your life, but you can't control them. So that's where they want to be. You can't get mad at the other person for accepting them because you don't know what they told them. So you got to fight or get mad at somebody who don't even know, probably don't know who you are. You they know that you exist. Huh? You, you about to do 25 to life over some pussy or some dick that don't even really belong to you. It belongs right. to that person. It All day. To me. Like, this is mine. This is mine. All day. And you can give it to who you want to give it to, just like they do. Right? But you can't sit up here and do 25 to life because while you're doing that, they're going to still be moving on and being with who they want to be with. And it won't be with you. And I learned that shit the hard way. I ain't even going to lie. I, I was that one to be like, oh, you know, rawr, you know, but I never went. My big thing was I stopped going after the female in teenage years. You know what I mean? Like I learned yeah. that lesson a long time ago. But in my adulthood, to me, it was the principle of the fact. Like if you got an individual that knows that you and so-and-so are committed relationship or whatever, people are only going to do what you let them do. Right. Yep. I had to remember and well remind myself of that. But, you know, some shot of tequilas wasn't my friend at the time. And it was, you know, the devil was sitting on my shoulder like, oh, beat that bitch ass, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but the other side, the common sense side on this side was like, man, you need to go on here and leave that alone. Because obviously he let her come over. But my thing was she was also very persistent. But obviously he was the weak one, but I wasn't in that mindset. You know what yeah. I mean? I was, it was all about principle to me. Right. And I get that. But the dumbest shit ever. <laughs> <laughs> I can admit that. I did some dumb shit over a dude. I can say it. You're not the only one. I did too. I did too. I listen from the time I was. 14 to 22, my high school sweetheart. So listen, in all that time, I've done some stupid things. <laughs> some stuff I probably should have got in trouble for. But didn't get caught. <laughs> right. That was it. And we just talked about that. The people that get caught go to jail or get in trouble in some type of way. And some people get away with it and just don't get caught. But if they did, they'd be in there too. But there's a lot of people that think that they're invincible. That is another thing. Right. Just and that's because scary. You, just because you don't get caught the first time or even if the universe gives you another pass on something, don't mean that you can just come out and butt beat your chest and think that you're invincible. Because, baby, let me tell you something. There's always somebody bigger, better, and smarter. Better. And and you're not invincible. This ain't no video game where you could just start over. Right. But the, Respawn, what is that? The the re I don't know the fucking video game. My son plays them all the time. But <laughs> life ain't no video game. Nope. You know what I mean? But that you can. Real. You can. It's that growth and that maturation. We go through phases in life, right? We're yeah. in. I'm in. I'm in chapter forty right now. That's what I call life. Me too. 
we're in chapter 40. If you in chapter 40 or at least midway 30 to your, you know, past 40, and you're still about that drama and chaos and no type of betterment for yourself, including taking on other people's problems and putting it on your plate, you haven't matured yet. That's just my mm-hmm. opinion. I agree because you, you still feeding off of others. You haven't found yourself yet. You haven't learned what makes you happy. You haven't learned what makes you tick. You haven't figured out that their journey isn't yours, but what you need to do is find out what works for you. Yes. Find out what works for you. And I think people don't give themselves an opportunity to do that because they like it. it, it, You ever meet somebody who don't feel validated if they're not needed. There's so many people like that. And so they can't move on because I need you, not me, but they need Mm -hmm. people to need them to validate them. It's almost like it it creates their entire existence. And they don't exist. Yeah. However, I can compare that to as being a parent, especially people that grew up in the trauma or always being that needed individual. And then all of a sudden they wake up and they're no longer having 50, 11 people request for their assistance or I need, I need, I need, let me get a snack. Let me get dinner. Let me get lunch. Let me get breakfast. Let me get, you don't have that anymore. So a lot of our elders tend to get to that lonely level or depressive level because that, that was their life. They don't have 50, 11 kids around them or even that abusive relationship at one point, abusive marriage at one point. Yeah. And now they're in their happy place. They're in this place that they built to where they can actually travel and be happy and be themselves. They don't do it because now mm-hmm. it's like they can't be alone. Yep. And that's why they said them little kids keep the older people young because they keep them busy and, and take them back to when they were so busy doing all the things. Right. But I think when people learn how to first love, love, love self. Yes. Love self. Yes. yes. And I, and I use the term when I, and, and I've been doing it probably, you know, with 20 years now, when I say love, and I, when I text and I say love, it's always L-U-V. I don't do the L-O-V-E, right? And to me, that love means I'm, I love you. I'm trying to understand where you're coming from. I'm trying to understand what you got going on. I'm trying to understand whatever that looks like. And then whatever you're saying to me is absolutely validated. Whether I get it or not, your feelings are validated. Your feelings are valid, right? I may not understand it. I may not get it. But I love you. I'll yes. do my best. But you have to L-U-V yourself. You have to learn to love yourself, understand yourself, and understand that you are valid. Your feelings are valid. Put that within you. If you yes. can teach yourself those three things, then other things will begin to become a domino effect. And then you'll do things out of love and out of kindness. You'll do it because you want to, not because you feel obligated. You will do or things not because that, that's where I was going. That's right. You won't feel like you need to do it. You'll do it because you can and you want to. But people don't go there. They just, it's like this adrenaline thing. Like, I, I need you to need me. You got to need me. This motherfucker need me. I got to be here. I got to do this. That got to do that. They need me. Hey, you hey, wouldn't have shit if it wasn't for me. That's them. Right? And you're looking like, what? What? <laughs> Let that shit go. Let that shit go. (laughs) I wish a motherfucker would tell me y'all wouldn't have shit because listen, have I done everything on my own my my whole life? Right there. I I I I have not everybody needs somebody sometime. Yes. And we can be, oh, I'm the independent woman. I did this for myself. It's just like a lot of single parents. I'd be like, but but so you say you didn't have no help at all? Right. None. None. You had some. It might not be every weekend or you know what I mean, whatever, but every everybody has had help from somebody. Because we can't live in this world alone. We can't we can't grow alone. 
We can't prosper alone. You can't do anything alone besides be born and die. And sometimes if you're a twin, you ain't born alone. But you can be comfortable alone. Yes. 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 I know Absolutely. people get in fucked up situationships, not even relationships, or even one ships because they can't they can't sleep in their bed at night by themselves. They gotta have that 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 coddle time or something. I don't know. One ship situationships because the damn show ain't no relationship because the relationship <laughs> takes two. Right. One ship and situationship. I love it. Hey, I, I I come up with my own words a lot, but yeah. So that is true, though. So definitely, I'm copying that book. Not your journey to take, baby. I am so proud of you. I am thank so you, glad thank you. you. We got to meet about two years ago, but we really only talk on Instagram mostly. But <laughs> yeah, but we got to do better. We got to do better. And I was so excited when you joined my live when I was going to Starbucks and talking. <laughs> I was so excited to see you. I was like, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> I was excited. And so I'm I so glad we're shit doing this live. On here. <laughs> right. Let me be able to come on your show and talk all kinds of shit. Right. <laughs> and- you are more than welcome to come back at as many times as you want. One day you'll be able to come and be in the studio with us. We're going we're gonna to work that out. We're going to yes, work that ma'am. out. Yes. But thank you, thank for, you for having me. You are very welcome. Do you have any? Give the website one more time, your name one more time, and your at sign on Instagram. I am Keisha Mason Campbell. I am the author of Not Your Journey to Take. You can get your copy of Not Your Journey to Take from my website, which is www.notyourjourneytotake.com. And you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and TikTok at notyourjourneytotake.com. Yay, you are amazing. Thank you for gracing the Her Shit Show. I love it. That you have a copy. And the producer was actually CC'd on the email. So we'll go from there, my dear. Sounds like a plan. Well, you have a super fantastic evening. And the next time we do it again, we can have something else to drink besides our coffee. Girl, listen, you see what mine says, right? My sister got me this cup. It says, I do not spew profanities. I enunciate them clearly like a fucking lady. I love this. Yeah. (laughs) And listen, I will be drinking like this. Yes. uh (laughs) Uh-huh. What you say? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to send you with the Hershey Show cup. We actually have coffee cups on um, branded. Yes, do you? Yep. Listen, I'm gonna have to be on one of my lives like this. Uh huh. Uh-huh, my early morning sip and check. Uh huh. They gonna be like, "What is that?" Uh huh. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. But we will talk many, many times, my dear. And again, thank you so much for blessing us on the Her Shit Show today. Thank you so much for having me. I love you. And it was my pleasure to be here. You have a super fantastic evening. Let that shit go. (laughs) Boom. Dropping that mic. (laughs) I love you. (laughs) Be sure to log on to YouTube.com and subscribe to the Her Shit Show at T-H-E. H-E-R-S-H-Y-T 